So um, this ad is sponsored by Anchor. If you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. Let me explain. It's free. There's creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. Anchor will distribute your podcast for you so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. You can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Uh, Good morning. This is Robin Norgren, and I am at um, Robin Norgren on Instagram, where you can find all my links. It's actually Robin underscore Norgren, R-O-B-I-N underscore N-O-R-G-R-E-N. You are at my podcast called Your Creative Peace. Find and deepen your creative voice while connecting with God. Um, What I talk about on this podcast is creativity, Montessori, and the meaning of life. And what I've decided on my 10-year anniversary of this book is to go through the series and just have you listen to it and think about it as you're um, starting to formulate or maybe reignite your creative voice. Or maybe you've never really um, experienced um, meeting of a muse and walking through your creativity. So this is just um, some food for thought um, for you to go through your day and try to connect with that on a very deep level. I find that creativity has been something that has helped me through um, some painful times in my life, some um, unsure times in my life, helped me to come to the point of being able to find answers um, and make decisions in um, situations that I just could not find my footing or see my way through. So I invite you to take this journey with me. I'd like to start with a poem from one of my favorite um, poets, Mary Oliver. Uh, The name of the poem is From This River, When I Was a Child, I Used to Drink. But when I came back, I found that the body of the river was dying. Did it speak? Yes, it sang out the old songs, but faintly. What will you do? I will grieve, of course, but that's nothing. What precisely will you grieve for? For the river? For myself? My lost joyfulness? For the children who will not know what a river can be? A friend? A companion? A hint of heaven? Is this somewhat overplayed? I said, it can be a friend. A companion? A hint of heaven? Let's begin with the next um, segment in the series, Your Creative Peace. Find and deepen your creative voice while connecting with God. I'd like to start um, with some questions. Have you ever written God a letter? I mean a letter about your deepest creative dreams. Take some time over the next couple days and think about it whether you write it down physically or if you actually formulate it in your head, and what would be the kind of things you would talk about in that letter? What lies have you believed that God is telling you about your creative journey or the way in which you create? What fears do you have wrapped up in acknowledging your creative side? Write down three of life's disappointments where you left, where you were left coming to terms with an unexpected term of events. And did you in any way engage with creativity to help you walk through that process? Here's a quote from Miles Davis. I'm always thinking about creating. My future starts when I wake when I wake up every morning and every day I find something creative to do with my life. I'm so glad to have you here talking about creativity. My heart is filled with joy for what the Lord can do through his word and through creativity. 
The journey officially begins today in this place, but perhaps you felt God's presence even earlier than this. Maybe you've begun experimenting with your creative identity. Or maybe you come here curious about how to integrate integrate creativity and Christianity. My prayer is that at the end of this time together, you will experience not only creativity, but perhaps even looking more deeply into passages of the Bible like the Psalms that can help you spark your creative journey. If you've never started a creative journal before, it's fairly easy. You just need a small notebook, a pen, an inspiring place to sit and reflect, and things like watercolor paint, pencils, um, different types of um, scrapbook paper, anything that you want to set around you like candles or a diffuser to help you really get into the mood of doing this. What I find is that if you have set aside a creative space, no matter how small, and it doesn't matter if you sit for five minutes or 25 minutes, it's uh, just a reminder in your brain to sit and take that time to really process things that are going on in your life or just to um, get away from whatever it is you're, you're just needing a break from. Times when I don't know where to start with my creative journey, I take um, the Bible and I go to the middle of the book called the Psalms. And in there, there are what you might call poems. And what I do is I will read a few of them and I will find a verse that strikes me and I might write it down. And then from there, I might take a word and then I might doodle off the word. Um, it's just a way to kind of get behind this fear that we sometimes get about where to start. And this is a way to kind of allow your brain to settle in, um, that you're not coming to a blank page cold and try to um, just connect first with the words you see and then take those words and help get behind the fear, I guess you would say, and start to just think and settle um, your mind and your thoughts and um, just reflect on what those words mean to you in that moment. Why the Psalms? The Psalms transport me to a place of song and melody, tears and lament. The passion, the tears, the hopes and fears of those who have gone before me are captured within the words. The intimacy that I cannot seem to convey or generate or inspire within my own speech fall before my eyes in the Psalms as an invitation to connect with my heart's cry again. Many may wonder if this is some form of cheating, the hallmark card of a means to getting to God. A sign of a bit of laziness on the part of the person who claims to desire to converse with God? If one has words to say, why not say them? Why the loss for words? But here's the thing I've found. The seeming lack of inspiration could stem from a number of places. It could be fatigue, the state in which one experiences exhaustion. The mind seems unable to come to a place of articulating thoughts. Despair, loneliness, sadness, and joys are all emotions that can take on incredible extremes and can drain tremendous amounts of energy. The phrase, I couldn't find the words, springs to mind when I think about this. The heights and depths our emotional hearts can go. The intensity in which we physically experience these feelings can hinder the way in which we bring thoughts together, rendering us speechless, both mentally and emotionally. Perhaps it's overstimulation. The amount of information that we tend to process at one time with televisions going, telephones ringing, traffic dilemmas, family situations, earbuds pumping, even our personal state of being, can cause such overload to our system that when we do find the few moments of quiet, we're unable to engage spiritually because we are literally tapped out emotionally. Psalms are the prayers we can clothe ourselves with when we find ourselves in these desert places. They become the music we need to get our hearts softened and rightly postured. The Psalms can become an inspirational soundtrack that can speak the words of our heart in raw emotional splendor. Movement with the heart leads to movement in the body, and movement towards a creative expression of gratitude if we allow it. Slowly, sways of beauty move outward from our heart and into the world we live in. 
and more specifically, the circumstances we find ourselves in. We find ourselves breathing more deeply and gently refreshing our bodies by this simple yet complex act of sitting still before the Lord. Will connecting creativity and Christianity work? This unspoken expectation needs to be discussed to challenge our thinking about how we gauge success when participating in a Bible study. The term work is such a slippery slope. We should consider letting go of the need to be productive in the ownership of results and recognize whether it is appropriate for the type of change our life is calling for. To sit before the Lord without expectation in no way implies the absence of gauging success. So, in one sense, the physical decision to put your butt in a chair renders a change in expectation. Having a direct energy towards an exercise, or having to direct energy towards a, an exercise, which asks for a different type of engagement, like creativity, is that rest? Well, rest as a sensory decision to release and let go. Again, is that in essence a work component? If by work we mean choosing to engage the Lord in a different manner without expectation, I would confidently say, yes, yes, this is work. Anytime we make the decision to meet with God, he never disappoints. The collection of works from the Psalms guarantees a meeting of the hearts, your heart and God's heart, in some fashion. If for no other reason, we will be reminded that we are not alone. Psalms provide a collection of past struggles and victories that offer an accurate overview of a life of one who walks in this world. My need to control myself, my environment, and my connections will soon butt up against other, how others choose to do the same. What we have left shapes the means by which we view the world and possibly the way we view God. The unexpected turns and twists that life throws at a person, despite her best intentions to be right, do right, and walk right before God, often parallels to the results one is experiencing who is not quite so intentionally mindful. The best one can hope for is a means to make sense of our plight as human beings. To expect to capture the exact plan of God for our lives would lead to a formula boxed in caricature rather than a deep relationship filled with trust and peace, the trust and peace that God is calling us to. Well, I hope this has been food for thought as you go through your day. Make sure and take some time to rewind and think about those questions we started on at the beginning. Psalms are like prayers the poems for our heart. When many times we can't grasp the words we need to say, the, fall, the Psalms come in and quench our spirit in a way that helps us to understand that we're not alone. I invite you to try the Psalms today if you have never done so, or to take a, a revisit if you haven't been there for a while. Thanks so much for stopping by.